It is nighttime, and a group of teenagers are having a party in the woods. Sitting alone at the base of a tree is a teenage girl and boy, confessing their true feelings for one another. They are interrupted by about four to five young men in dark clothing, wearing hoods. They have completely black eyes, and the teenage boy asks them what they want. They respond by asking if they will let them in. The boy is deeply disturbed and goes to punch one of the hooded youths, but the black-eyed youth grabs his fist and breaks his arm. The girl runs off in terror and tries to call her father, but the connection isn't great. She drops her phone and runs as she can hear them approaching. She runs into her friend, who is holding his arm in pain. They attack him and she runs again. This time they chase her, and she falls over. One of the black-eyed teenagers hits her with a baseball bat, and the girl screams, saying that she will let them in. The black-eyed boy lowers the bat and smiles. Present day, 12-year-old Emily wakes up for a regular day at school. Her mother and father are extremely busy people and almost can't engage in conversation with Emily, as they are both busy getting ready for work. Emily gets taken to school by her father, after barely finishing her breakfast in a rush. When she gets to school, she is bullied by other girls in her class who pretend to invite her to a party and then tell her they made a mistake and laugh amongst themselves. After school, Emily catches up with a younger boy named Chris from the neighborhood and sits with him in his garage while he puts headphones on. He has created an extraterrestrial communication device. Chris has made a breakthrough, and Emily gets to see his device glitch and go crazy as they both hear strange clicks and chirps like they are hearing E.T. Then the whole garage begins to shake. They both are a little frightened, but also want to see what happens next, when suddenly the garage door opens and Chris's older sister parks her car inside. She instantly apologizes to them for interrupting anything. Chris rolls his eyes, because all the shaking and communication has stopped. Emily arranges to hang out with Chris again the next night and she goes home. Emily's parents are not home yet, so she entertains herself. The doorbell rings and she thinks it could be takeaway. When she opens the door, the same group of black-eyed teenagers stare at her, all in black clothing and hoods. Emily feels very uneasy about seeing them there. They ask her if she will let them in, and she politely but nervously tells them they have the wrong house and shuts the door in their faces and locks it. She quickly runs around the house, making sure all other doors are locked and she can see them running around the sides of her house. She grabs a landline phone and calls 911, and then runs upstairs to the bathroom, locks the door and sits in the bath. The 911 operator asks her questions and then promises police will be there right away. She breathes heavily, extremely scared. Something makes her want to look upwards and she slowly does, revealing the black-eyed teenagers staring down at her from the skylight. They ask if she will let them in. She screams and runs out of the bathroom and down the stairs, out the front door and the hooded teenagers chase her. She runs towards the police cars that are pulling into her street, and they rush out of their vehicles to tend to her, but the hooded black-eyed teenagers are nowhere to be found. The police question Emily and the police officer eyes her father. When he is leaving, he says to her father that he thinks Emily is just having after-effects from bullying at school. Her dad comes to her defense and tells the police officer that breaking through their skylight is not just simple bullying. The police officer looks confused and tells her father that they have inspected the bathroom, but the skylight is intact and there is no sign of broken glass anywhere. Emily's father is confused. Emily goes over to Chris's house that night to hang out with him and his big sister, while his mother goes out. Chris's sister asks Emily if she will do her makeup and they go to her bedroom to do makeup. After doing Chris's sister's makeup, she convinces Emily to come along to her boyfriend's birthday party. Emily is not keen on the idea, because the popular girls in her class will most likely be there and will bully her. However, Chris's sister explains she will get to hang out with her, and she is the one inviting her. Emily agrees and they go across to the party. Once there, she is introduced to Chris's sister's boyfriend, and he says she must know his little sister, which she does, as one of the bullies. She pretends to be nice to Emily, and they go to sit together to play truth or dare. All three girls are very rude to Emily, and Emily runs out of the house, away from the party. Meanwhile, one of the mean girls goes to the bathroom and the hooded black-eyed teenagers are there. They stare at her and won't move, they ask her to let them in, and she hurls abuse back at them. One of them cups the side of her face and she slaps his hand away. He does it again, but this time punches her full force in the face. Emily sees a counselor for some event that happened that she feels guilty about. It is also the source of some of her bullying, but the counselor reassures her it is not her fault, and she can choose to let it go. Emily goes to see Chris and he tries his experiment again with talking to aliens. But then an error occurs and Emily suggests maybe it is not meant to happen. But Chris is not perturbed and reminds her how many times Thomas Edison failed before he successfully made the light bulb. Meanwhile, Chris's big sister is alone, locking up the cafe where she works after hours, when she hears someone knock on the door. She opens the blinds to see the black-eyed teenagers standing there. They ask her if she will let them in. And she apologizes that they are shut and she can't sell them anything because the cash register is closed. They don't respond and just stand there. She suggests somewhere they can go to get a drink and closes the blinds. She is very disturbed by their presence. She walks away into the kitchen and then turns around to see them right in front of her, asking her again to let them in. She runs from them and goes to a storage room. They try to open the door and one of them manages to push the door open. They hit her and ask her again. And due to being in such intense fear, she agrees to let them in. 
Emily is having dinner over at Chris's and his mom's house. Chris's mom calls his sister Jessie, but she doesn't answer. Chris tells his mom she hasn't come home yet so his mom tries to call her, but her phone goes straight to voicemail. His mother starts to get concerned, so Chris checks the GPS location of her phone, and it says she is still at work. Since it is an hour after her shift has ended, his mother becomes panicked, and they all go to her work to see where she is. The front of the cafe is locked but the back door has been kicked in. Her phone is lying on the ground in the back of the cafe. Police are called, and Emily and Chris become very frightened, wondering where Jesse has been taken. The next morning, Emily and Chris meet up with a researcher journalist who has been investigating the black-eyed children in all the missing kids' cases, and reports of these occurrences. He tells them about 50 years ago similar disappearances happened, dozens of kids went missing, and there was only one eyewitness, Mr. Munch. Mr. Munch is known by Emily, and all the kids in the neighborhood, for being a very creepy, grumpy man that does not tolerate anyone on his property. The journalist tells them he has tried several times to talk to him, but he threatens to hurt him if he does not leave his property. Emily tells him she will talk to him, and the journalist discourages her, saying it is not a good idea, but Emily wants to find Jesse and the others that are missing, so she goes to Mr. Munch's house with Chris. Chris is extremely scared and tells Emily they should just go. Emily doesn't listen to him and rings the doorbell. Through the intercom Mr. Munch just tells them to leave it at the door, thinking it is a courier, but Emily quickly explains why they are there. She rings again and she speaks into the intercom, pleading him to help them because her friend is missing. There is no response on the intercom, but the front door pops open and tentatively, Emily and Chris wander into his house and follow the sound of a piano that he must be playing. They come to the room where he is playing some music, and he stops to talk to them. He explains that he hasn't talked about the black-eyed kids for over 50 years because he was too scared to, but considering all the local kidnappings that are occurring, he feels he needs to talk. He recounts what happened to his fiance, that she was taken by them to outer space. Emily and Chris look at each other, alarmed. They also learn from him that the length of their visit to Earth is exactly 10 nights from the first abduction, and they won't come back for another 20 years each time. He explains to them that they call themselves Young Spars. Emily and Chris recognize this name, as it was said to them by the ETs that they contacted through Chris's device. With the impending deadline, Emily feels an intense sense of urgency and tells Mr. Munch they must leave. Mr. Munch tells her to wait a minute, and he hands her a brass-colored whistle and tells her to use it if she needs to summon them or cause great pain. Emily and Chris know exactly what to do. They head home to Chris's and try to contact the ETs. His device almost blows their power twice, but Chris knows how to start the backup generator up. The ETs tell them they can defeat the young spars by shining the light. Emily makes a post on social media and sends it to all the kids from school to meet her at the park at night and tells them she knows how to get their missing friends back. Emily and Chris stand in the park and think no one is coming when all of a sudden, Jesse's boyfriend and his sister come, along with their friends. Emily then blows on the whistle she got from Mr. Munch. Nothing happens at first, but then the familiar hooded black-eyed teenagers approach Emily, asking her if she will let them in. She tells them not a chance, and then cues everyone and they all turn on their flashlights at them. The black-eyed teenagers scream and run from the light, as if it is burning them. Chris gets excited that it is working, but then as soon as the lights are lowered they come back. Emily runs to the road, and has planned for others to have a car parked on the road. The black-eyed humans follow her, and then she signals for her friends in the cars to turn their headlights on. The black-eyed teens instantly fall to the ground in agony, and Emily tells them if they tell her where their friends are, they will let them go. They do not reply but just yell in pain. Suddenly, one of the black-eyed teens comes up behind one of the friends sitting in one of the cars with the headlights on, and punches him unconscious, and turns his lights off. The other driver is also unconscious, and his lights have been turned off too. Soon the other black-eyed teens get up from lying on the road, and Emily realizes that Chris is missing. She frantically screams for him, but cannot find him. The police are called again after this event, and the same officer that talked to her father after her skylight incident now tells her to stay put in her house, and she will be under watch. She tells him they need to find Chris, and she knows how to help, but he will not let her get involved. Emily paces up and down in her room. Later, her grandma comes in to talk to her, and she convinces her grandma to help her escape as she knows how to find Chris and she can't do that locked up inside their house. Her grandma agrees and pretends to fall at the base of the stairs so that Emily's parents are focused on her while Emily escapes. Emily uses the GPS finder for Chris's phone and rides out on her bike in the dark to find him. As she arrives at the nature reserve, her science teacher pulls up and offers to help her. Together they walk into the park and stand directly over the spot where the GPS says Chris's phone is, but can't see them. They hear a noise and hide behind a tree, and see one of the black-eyed teens walking past. They watch him jump down into some kind of hole and then follow him. They investigate a hole that is like a cave system, and they jump down into it. They explore it and then hide when they hear someone coming. They see a black-eyed teen pressing buttons on a device, and it forms an electric barrier, and Emily and her science teacher see that their friends are all being held in a small cave cell. Emily shines a light at the black-eyed teen, and then tries to press the device to unlock their friends, but her science teacher walks up and smashes it with his palm, breaking it and to Emily's surprise it works. The bars disappear. Emily rushes over to Jesse who tells her they have taken Chris somewhere else, 
to transport him to another place. Emily leaves her science teacher there to untie everyone while she goes in search of Chris. She runs up behind a few black-eyed teens who are operating a portal and putting kids through it. They grab Chris next, but Emily gets their attention and threatens them that she will shine her flashlight if they don't release him. The one holding Chris reluctantly lets him go, and another black-eyed teen walks up behind her. She shines the light at him and then she turns to see the little girl she felt responsible for. The little girl says to Emily that it wasn't her fault what happened, and she simply fell. But she is fine now, and she wants Emily to take her hand so they can play together. Emily is so moved emotionally that she reaches out her hand to touch the girl's hand. But then when she looks up again she has turned into a black-eyed teen. Now Emily is surrounded by these black-eyed aliens. And they are moving closer to her, staring at her, when suddenly they flinch and scream because her science teacher, along with all the friends that were kidnapped, are all shining lights. One by one they kick or push the black-eyed aliens into the portal until they are all gone. One week later, Emily gets in a car with her science teacher and Chris to go to the state science competition, and as they drive along, she passes Mr. Munch. She mouths the words, thank you. As they pass through the middle of town, the whole town has set up a street banner that says congratulations to Emily and Chris for their extraterrestrial contact invention and that they are all proud of them. Emily is moved, and Chris is so happy to see everyone standing with signs and banners, cheering them on as they leave town. Meanwhile, back at Mr. Munch's house, he goes to his bathroom, takes out his contacts, and then looks up in the mirror to reveal that he has completely black eyes and is a black-eyed entity. The End